Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today I'm going to show how to cartoonize a portrait using PaintShot Pro's built-in capabilities. Now I've done another video that's kind of similar to this topic, but that approach relies a lot more on vector graphics to create sort of the cartoon effect. This approach is going to be making use of picture painting. So let's get to it. All right, so to get started with this effect, um, we're going to be using this picture of this gal I got from pexels.com and I'm going to use my nifty script that just shrinks the image by a half just to move or create it much more manageable size for demonstration. So like I mentioned earlier this approach makes use of pick to painting and I'm going to be kind of focusing on a specific a specific style of pick to painting but the reality is is you can use any any style you want but then you'll see how some of the things that follow really kind of tie it all together. So uh, the first thing we're going to do because we're going to want that pick to painting layer to, you know, blend with the original, we're going to duplicate. And then we're going to go to effects, plugins and pick to painting. And for this demonstration, I'm going to focus on using Retropop just because I feel like Retropop does pretty well with gradients and doesn't try to add a lot more lines and details in between. One of the things you'll want to consider for your image is what strength of pick to painting you want to apply. And previewing is always a good idea just because you can kind of get a sense of how well does it identify lines versus, you know, smooth gradient areas. And if you feel pretty good about what it's producing, then you can do send and close. So there we have our pick to painting effect. And one thing you'll notice right off the bat is it has changed the color. And, um, you know, for, for trying to cartoonize a portrait, portrait, I would kind of rather have it have the original color. And the simplest way we can get that back is by going to blend a layer and changing it to luminance legacy and so what this is essentially doing is saying you know take the luminance of this layer but use the color from whatever's beneath it so now that we've done that you can kind of do one of two things you can either merge or in my case what i'd rather like to do just to preserve some of the stuff i've done already is do a copy merge and then a paste as a new layer so this already has a sort of cartoony feel to it um, but just to enhance that a little bit further, what we can do is go to Adjust, Add Remove Noise, and do Edge Preserving Smooth. And then right now I have it set to be like cranked up as far as it can go. So, so what you can kind of see is really what it's doing is kind of getting rid of this texture that the pick to paint has a tendency to, to put on there. Now, as well, you know, there, there are other things that you can do if you really want it to have, you know, a much smoother complexion or like some of this detail that you see here, if you wanted to smooth that out, there's a lot of things you could do from, you know, Gaussian blurring and other things um, just to just to, you know, get that sort of look. It just all depends on what you're going for. For me, I'm not going to focus on that because this is really just meant to be the technique of creating sort of the cartoon effect. So this is pretty good so far, but there's a few things that we want to address. One, I would say the saturation has been decreased and also the, the you know, this, the nice clean gradient background has been sort of mangled by um, the pick to painting, trying to find detail where it doesn't quite exist. And I'd say that's one of the downsides of pick to painting is it has a tendency to do that. So we're going to address both of those. Um, the first thing um, that we're going to do is create a mask so we can turn this layer off we have our new merged layer selected and we can say show all and then now with my mask layer selected and with black you know set as my stroke color I can just grab a brush and simply just you know paint over the areas that I don't really want to have this this pick to painting detail I'm going to be a little bit loose about it in here just because, you know, separating the figure from the background is not really the main main focus of this tutorial. But one thing that is nice about this particular setup is that since the original image is underneath, 
I can get away with, you know, erasing a little bit more than probably normally should be allowed for it to still look okay. And if you go a little bit overboard, you can always paint white to bring bring the detail back. So now we've kind of brought up a much cleaner, we brought back the much cleaner background than the very jagged one that was that was created by pick to painting And then the next thing that I had mentioned was sort of an issue was the saturation. So what we can do is, um, unfortunately, you can't seem to add a adjustment layer on top of a group initially, but if we select, say, one of the regular raster layers and say, adjustment layer of vibrancy and then just hit OK and then we can drag it to the top and now we can go to properties and then start to adjust the slider and we'll see that it'll affect the entire image at that point. So now we've brought a little bit more of the color back um, but at this stage pretty much anything is possible. We could also add another you know another adjustment layer if we want to you know enhance the contrast a little bit and so there you have it, that's the general effect, or the general sequence to create this sort of effect. It relies on pick to painting, but it has some follow-on effects to, to, you know, get the colors right and, you know, to clean up the background, for example. So then now on a separate image, I've just put the, you know, cartoonized version on top of the original so that we can just kind of see the difference between the two. Pretty simple, not a whole lot of manual process involved, just a matter of using pick to paint and then adjusting a few things after the fact. So now I'm just gonna cover a few things that you might run into that might you know, make this not work out so well and how you can kind of get over them. So now the first problem you may run into is the problem of too much detail in areas where you don't want that detail to be. Like if we preview what, you know, Retro Pop does to this nice gentleman's jacket, for example, we'll see that it just, it created a whole bunch of detail kind of all over. And, you know, it's probably, it, it might be more detail than you really want to have to deal with after the fact. One thing you can do in this particular case is, you know, we can we can adjust the luminance level so that, for example, his jacket, you know, loses a lot of the detail. Like it almost gets to a point where, you know, it's clipped, if you will, on the dark end. So in doing that, you know, we've we've modified the image. It's not quite the way we wanted it to be originally, per se, but what we're looking for is the effect that that has on running the pick to paint. So then in here you can see a lot of that that crazy detail that was there now has been eliminated and you'll end up with a much cleaner cartoony image than this very like jagged, you know, kind of look all over his jacket. So the next issue you may run into using pick to paint for this particular technique is um, specifically using retro pop like I showed is that you can end up with lines that are really unhelpful or unpleasing or unesthetic so like in this case I'm perfectly fine with you know generally what the AI has come up with but this line in particular here is kind of creepy and you know doesn't really add value to the image but what we can do is still say send to close and in this particular case, there's a nifty tool under the all the cloning tools uh, called Scratch Remover. And with a fairly generous width, what we can do is kind of drag along here and it has the effect of kind of eliminating that line there. So then now we have a much more pleasing image to work with just by having eliminated that one problematic area. The last thing I'll mention is just that, um, you know, the demos I did here were primarily using retro pop, um, but for sure, for some images, you know, other other ones of the pick to painting styles could be better, um, will produce something better. It's just a matter of experimentation. And in some cases, the pick to painting um, style won't actually change the color. So you won't have to go through the step of, you know, doing the blend layer to get the color back. 
But just by playing around, you know, you can get a variety of different, very cartoony looking images that have some pretty cool detail and are very reflective of the original photograph that you started with. So have fun with that. Pick to painting is a really good tool, although as you can see, sometimes it can really produce its best results when slightly augmented with other PaintShop Pro capabilities after the initial uh, stylization. So that's it for me. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you would like to get updates of new content, click the subscribe button. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is at the link on the TV screen. And I'll see you guys next time.